Hi, this is Mrs. Kidman, and in this video, we are going to be discussing how you can prove the triangle mid-segment theorem based on what we have here. So when we're doing this proof, instead of it being a typical geometry proof, what we actually have done is we've taken our geometry triangle and we have put it on a coordinate grid. And so some people call this a coordinate proof, which means that we have a couple of different things that we can use that we don't typically get to use when we do geometry proofs. Some of those things include midpoint formulas, distance formulas, and some things like that. slope definition of parallel lines based on whether or not they're in a coordinate plane, things like that. And so our scope of what we get to use changes, but because it changes, it makes our problems more interesting. So let's start with this one. So we're given that DE is a mid-segment of triangle OBC. Okay, so let's make our cute little two-way table here. Here's our statement. We have our reason on this side, and we are given that DE is a mid-segment of triangle OBC. So that is given to us. The other piece of information that is given to us is given to us in our picture. And what it says is that O is at the point 0, 0. B is at the point 2Q, 2R. And C is at the point 2P, 0. Okay, now notice how we have these twos and these variables. Now these are just arbitrary points. So without loss of generality, we can actually use any points here and it should still work out the same way. So we are gonna use those points, but again, any points can be given. So we're just assigning those to each of those things. So then what we wanna prove is that two lines are parallel. Well, in order to prove that two lines are parallel, that means that they need to have the same slope and be not the same line. Well, based on our image here, we know that DE and OC are not the same line. And we also know that because DE is the mid-segment of that triangle. There's no way for a mid-segment, which it is defined as the connection of two midpoints of sides of a triangle, can also be one of the sides. So we know that they're not the same line. So if we can prove that DE and OC have the same slope, we can prove that they're parallel. So what I'm going to do is I want to first figure out where the points D and E are because once we know those points, we can use them. So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm actually gonna use the midpoint formula. And the midpoint formula says I'm going to take half of the, it's going to be half the distance of A and half the distance, or half the distance of X and half the distance of Y between our two points. So in this case, to figure out the point D, what we need to do is take half of the distance from O to B, and then, for our x values and half of the y value from O to B. To find E, we need to do half of those values from B to C. So D is going to be, or that mid-segment of it, is going to be the point O to B, which is going to be 0 plus 2Q divided by 2, followed by 0 plus 2R divided by 2. So then as we figure that out, we figure out that the point D is actually, once we simplify this, going to be the point QR. Similarly, E, we can do the same thing. Again, that's the difference between B and C. So we're going to get 2Q plus 2P over 2. And then 2R plus 0 over 2, which ends up getting us that E is going to be the point P plus Q comma R. Okay, now this is super important. So we have those. Now, once we have those two values for D and E, we can use those to then calculate the slope of our line here. So we have our midpoints. So let's figure out what is the slope of DE. Well, the slope of DE, what we're going to do is we're actually going to use that slope formula to calculate it. And that slope formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That's the formula that we want to use here. So y2, which in this case is going to be r minus r over P plus Q minus Q equals zero over P, which really just equals zero. Great. Now let's compare that to the slope of the line that we want to compare it to, which is OC. And so what we're going to do is use that point OC to figure it out. So we're going to do Y2, which is zero, minus Y1, which is zero, over 2P minus zero, which gives us zero over 2P which equals zero. Perfect, so we've proven that those slopes are the same. So what that means is that DE is parallel to OC by the definition of parallel lines on 
a coordinate plane. Awesome. Now, once we have that, the last thing that we need to do is we need to prove that the distance from DE is half of the distance of OC. So we can actually use our distance formula to figure that out. So I'm going to use my distance formula to figure out what those distances are. And so DE has a distance of, remember to do that distance formula, we are going to do Y2 minus Y1 over y2 minus y1 squared plus x2 minus x1 squared. So what we get here is we get r minus r squared plus p plus q minus q squared. And this ends up giving us the square root of 0 squared plus p squared, which equals the square root of p squared, which is just p. Now, typically, our square root says it's going to be the positive and negative. But because distance has to be positive, our answer here is going to be positive. And now let's go ahead and look at the distance formula of OC. Well, we can take the y values. So we've got 0 minus 0 squared plus 2p minus 0 squared. And we end up getting the square root of 0 plus 2p squared. And that ends up equaling the square root of 4p squared, which is really just 2p. And so we can see that by the distance formula, those are those two things. And we can see that that relationship between those two is that DE equals one half of OP. Because if I substitute in those values, P equals one half times 2P, then we show that P equals P, right? So that's using that substitution property. We can show that those two things are the same. So based on this coordinate system using our midpoint formula, our slope formula, and the definition of parallel lines, including and then using that distance formula, we can see why the triangle midsetment theorem will always work. And this is super helpful. And we use the same process when we're trying to decide if a line is actually a mid-segment. In this case, we're doing it with arbitrary points, but to really determine whether or not that's the mid-segment and it follows that mid-segment theorem, we follow the same process. We figure out where the midpoints are if they're not given to us, and then we use those midpoints to then determine whether or not the slopes are the same. And if the slopes are the same, then we know that those distances should be the same. And if they're not, then we know there's something wrong with our triangle or where that point is. So it's super awesome, this wonderful thing that we've done. And this is how you prove that triangle mid-segment theorem using what we call a coordinate proof, where we take our geometry shape and put it on a coordinate plane. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out, but that's how we would proceed with